for each loop is super simple. It's like a regular for loop. And to prove it, we are gonna code out a regular for loop first. So a regular for loop, if we were to use integers, would look something like this. We would have our four. We would have some arbitrary int a is equal to zero. And then we would run this as long as a is less than some value that we either know or we are taking input for. We'll just use five here. And then we increment a every single time. And then we are going to be inside of our for loop and we do a sysout.println. And then inside of our print line right here, we are just going to print out a. And this is going to give us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, a for each loop for this will be a little bit different. So it's great because we would be able to use like arrays, um, lists, and all of these things with a for each loop. So I'm just going to do a sysout.print line where we have the line separating these two things. And now we can look at the for each loop. So before we write this, we are going to need an array to store our values. We'll do int arr is equal to, and then inside of here, we're just going to have one, two, three, and four. So again, this is great if we know these values, they're stored somewhere, or if like we are passed in user input. And we can also use like array lists, link lists, and all these other things. So we have our four part that stays the same. We are going to have the first part that also stays the same. We're going to do int a is equal to, uh, actually, we don't need to do a is equal to zero. We just need to make some value a. And then we have our colon right here. And then we have whatever we're going through, which is a r r r. And so what this is basically doing is it's saying that, well, for the first time we make this, we're going to examine what we have here, right? And this is going to start at zero. So it's going to get the zeroth index. Every time this for loop goes, we are going to increment one up. So we're going to get this value next, and then this value next, and this value next. It's a great way to actually go through things. So that is going to go through this entire thing. And all we have to do is a sysout.println where we want to print out our value a right here. And again, if we only have one line for a for or a while or if else statements, we don't need brackets, but we can put them there if we want to. So if we were to run this, we would print out zero, one, two, three, four, uh, just as we do here. I do not include a zero, but if we were to include a zero, it would be zero, one, two, three, four. Now the for each loop can be used for integers like this, but it can also be very easily used with strings. So if I were just to make a string array, so like string str, and then inside of here, we'll just do hi, hello. We can actually, oh, we do need commas separating these because it is a list. Um, if we wanted to, we could use numbers as well. Remember, numbers can be a, there they are string types. If we put them in the parentheses, we'll just end it there and end this line. And now for a for each loop, we're going to have for our parentheses. We are going to run this since it's a string now, string A, and then we're gonna run this, we're looking at str. So then we're gonna be inside of our for loop, and then inside of here, we're just going to have a sysout.println where we print the A. And if we were to run this, uh, I didn't put a spacer in here, but I'll do that just so it's really easy to see. This is just separating them. So we have a space in here, and we have hi, hello, one, two, three, which is our string right here. So this is the syntax for a for each loop, and that is for integers and syntax for a string, but we can do this with other variable types as well.